Hello and welcome to a new painting tutorial. Today we are diving into painting a Dwarven Rune Sage from the Dwarven Legacy Collection, a miniature full of character and dynamism. As always, we kick off things by applying a fine layer of black primer with an airbrush, ensuring a perfect canvas for our colors to adhere and pop. We then start with the clothing, using amethyst blue for the base color, making sure to cover every bit with precision, leaving no space untouched. Then, with a 50-50 mix of amethyst blue and faded ultramarine, let's begin our journey into highlighting the clothes, focusing our efforts on the high folds to start sculpting the form. Make sure you use the side of the brush, this will make it way easier than using the tip. We now switch to a mix of 30% amethyst blue and 70% faded ultramarine, narrowing our focus to exaggerate the volumes and add drama to the attire. For the skin, we lay down a base of matte brown, covering meticulously mirroring our approach with the clothing to ensure a solid foundation to the intricate details to follow. Bugman's Glow then covers the base, creating a smooth transition between the shadows and midtones. We're being very careful for the head, as it's the main focal point of the miniature and we want to be very precise with our brush strokes here. We're also focusing on the raised parts of the miniature, which would be where the light directly hits them. A blend of 50-50 Bugman's Glow and basic skin tone brings the first layer of light to the skin, illuminating the highest points and seamlessly blending the mid-tones into highlights. Same as before, we're now focusing on the areas that the light would directly hit the miniature skin. With basic skin tone alone, we apply the clearest lights on the skin's peaks. You can use the lamp's reflection as a guide, or you can also visualize where the main light source would naturally hit. As I said before, be very careful with this step, as the face is the main focal point of most miniatures, so you want to paint as cleanly as possible in this step. Black Grey serves as our choice for the pants base color, setting a shadowy foundation for the layers to come. A mix of 50-50 black grey and dark blue grey introduces the mid-tones of the pants, weaving texture and depth into the fabric. With dark blue grey, we apply the pants highlights, focusing on the elevated folds, mirroring the earlier clothing process and emphasizing every high fold. Khaki becomes the base of the cape, setting a neutral stage for the texture and highlights that will follow. The midtones are applied with a 50-50 mix of khaki and deck tan. Here, we employ short brush strokes, drawing fine lines in the same direction to mimic the cape's weave and add texture. Adding more deck tan to our mix for the lights, we continue with short strokes but lessen the line length, enhancing the fabric effect with clearer distinctions. The tonic edges are marked with matte brown as the base color, prepping them to be painted yellow, adding a vibrant contrast to the figure. A 50-50 mix of matte brown and sun yellow covers the previous color, deepening the shadows left in the base, making yellow easier to paint over it. This step is crucial for achieving the desired saturation without the greenish hue direct application over black might cause. Deepening on the intensity we seek, we add more yellow to our mix, adjusting the vibrancy to match our vision for the piece. The cape's edge is painted with matte brown and highlighted with flat earth, simulating a leather effect that adds another layer of texture and detail. Copper is used as the base for the shoulder pads, laying down a metallic foundation that will catch the eye and add richness to the armor. Then, followed with brass, we highlight the shoulder pad's raised plates, adding depth and dimension to the armor, making it stand out with a gleaming finish. Basalt grey becomes the base for the beard, setting a somber tone that will build upon to capture the Rune Sage's rugged appearance. Following this, a 50-50 mix of basalt grey and wolf grey begins to define the beard strands, adding texture and life to the facial hair. Same as with the skin, you need to be very careful, as we're now working on the focal point of the miniature where most of the contrast and cleanness needs to be. A blend of 30% basalt grey and 70% wolf grey marks the individual strands, giving the beard a realistic texture and depth. With ivory, we precisely outline the shoulder pads using the brush aside for a sharply defined line, accentuating the metallic element's edges. Remember that when edge highlighting, you almost always want to use the side of the brush, 
For the owl, we employ the same colors as the beard. This choice unifies the color palette, ensuring the miniature remains cohesive with its defined scheme. The owl's highlights are applied with the dry brush technique. This will quickly but effectively accentuate the plumage, using a small, careful dry brush to achieve crisp highlights without overdoing it. The books are painted in a variety of colors for chromatic diversity, with the pages done in khaki to give an aged effect. An Egrex Earth Shade wash is used to effectively and swiftly define the page's depth. The application of washes must be very careful to avoid excess if too loaded. A dry brush with khaki recovers the page's edges and cleans up any natural wash spills, refining the aged look of the pages. Burned red and dark Prussian blue alternately color the book covers, adding a splash of color to the miniature's base. For the red book's highlights, we add scarlet blood to the mix, enriching their vibrancy and detail. A lighter blue highlights the blue books, enhancing this element and bringing the books to life on the miniature as well. With burnt red and scarlet blood, we paint the main book's ribbon, adjusting the intensity with more scarlet blood for a vivid effect. We now start the base with black primer, using a similar workflow to the miniature, ensuring consistency across the piece. The ground is painted with matte brown and highlighted with flat earth, using a dry brush technique, adding texture and depth while saving us a lot of time. Basalt Grey lays the base color for the rocks, setting a solid foundation for the rugged terrain. With Wolf Grey applied with a dry brush, we define the rock's relief, highlighting the texture and shapes. The same process is applied to the grass using deep green and grass green, creating a natural, lush look for the base. Finally, the pumpkin is painted with burnt red, gradually adding hot orange for the highlights, bringing warmth and a pop of color to the scene. And that's it! Thank you so much for joining me on this painting journey. If you found this guide helpful, please leave your thoughts, suggestions or questions in the comments below. I'm always eager to hear your feedback and see how your own Dwarven Minis turn out. See you in the next one.